my father is, was a traditional healer. He used me to take me along out into the fell. That's probably where my love for nature probably started. He would also uh, not allow me to harm certain things. And as I grew up, this love for nature grew up in me up to this stage where I am right now. It's very critical for us to put, also to put resources in trying to uh, uh, conserve wildlife so that we do not lose it. During the planning stages of Ingula, concerns were raised by interested parties about what impact construction and operation would have on the environment. The Department of Environmental Affairs required ESCOM to do an environmental impact assessment and determine mitigating measures for its construction footprint. ESCOM's environmental impact assessment soon found that the site was located in a very sensitive area. Wetlands, especially within the construction area, were a contentious issue, as the Upper Bedford Wetland is a Ramsar protected wetland. Wetlands are a major contributor to water security and hide millions of cubic liters within its clay and reeds. Disruption or destruction of these natural filters and flood buffers was a big concern to all, including ESCOM. Ingula is not only the custodian of three unique habitats, namely escarpment forest, high altitude wetland and grasslands, but thousands of species also call these habitats home. Ingula hosts hundreds of bird species, dozens of mammal, reptile and amphibian species, some of which are critically endangered and endemic only to this small biosphere. These numbers grow each day as the dedicated team of conservationists identify new species. During the annual Birding Big Day, volunteers of all ages and levels of experience can also contribute to the number of species spotted on site by identifying and logging every bird they see in a 12-hour period. It was clear that ESCOM would have to protect not only the land and water here, but also the rich biodiversity itself. Wetlands and streams may not be completely dammed up and water equivalent to the natural flow has to be released into the downstream systems 
to sustain the lives that depend on it. To this effect, ESCOM invested a lot of engineering into systems that mimic natural flow and 10-year flood scenarios, as well as prevent erosion to the wetland. A legacy that was inherited when the original farms were purchased was hundreds of kilometers of erosion gullies caused by overgrazing in the area. Just one of the many numerous uh, past evidence of past bad managed by farming uh, practices that has led into bad erosions like this. This is the results of cattle moving, going to water or going to salt places. But if I drive there myself and lead you into, the, into them, you can clearly see how much more work is required to try and uh, put these places back to their natural stasis. To secure the precious topsoil, ESCOM soon took action and rehabilitated more than 100 kilometers of gullies, some big enough to fit a house in. In future, to prevent this erosion, only wild grazers will graze here. In order to be compliant with national nature conservation law and to protect the many endemic species of the area, an alien invasive species eradication program is in effect on site. The Wattle's been a, another success story as well. ESCOM is obligated as a landowner in terms of law to actually uh, uh, manage alien vegetation on the property. With the, with the takeover or the, the purchase of the properties, we uh, inherited all this historical disturbance which is now can be seen from the Wattle. This particular catchment down here is, although it's not linked to our dam, our lower dam, which is our primary source of, of water for the project. We did this as part of our legal commitment to, uh, to manage uh, alien vegetation on the property. The Ingula Partnership is an agreement undergone in 2005 between ESCOM, the Middlepunt Wetland Trust and BirdLife SA. And this development, I mean, was really initiated shortly after we published our important bird areas directory which was 1998, and, and this area, um, bedford Chatsworth, was identified as one of the country's 122 important bird areas. Exactly. And these, right. these are IBAs, as we call them, which have been identified using internationally developed criteria. You know, they hold threatened species or endemic species, you know, birds with a local, localized population or distribution, as well as um, birds that congregate. So it was one of the country's 122 IBAs now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can't conserve birds everywhere in the country. It's a big country, but there are these areas, these specific sites which are important for birds, and this happened to be an important bird area, um, you know, partly because of the population of white-winged flufftails, which, which it supports. To protect the habitat and ensure the survival of the rare white-winged flufftail, a red data species known only to be found in a handful of locations around the world. By establishing this partnership, the path was set for the proclamation of a nature reserve. Entities like BirdLife South Africa are working in partnership with ESCOM on this project was to ensure that our impacts on the AV fauna is minimal. Annually, the Ingula Visitor Center, in conjunction with the Ingula Conservation Team, hosts a wetland walk. Interested individuals and schools hike through the pristine grasslands and wetlands, learning more about the importance of these habitats. Wildlife spotting opportunities abound during these hikes and is a bird watcher's heaven.
It is a great privilege for the Ingula team to educate and inform people, not only about pumped storage technology, but about conservation as well. School groups visit often, and the site is also open to members of the public. Ingula hopes to inspire the young future builders by showing them what can be built with education as your cornerstone. Although primary school groups may not go underground to experience the engineering part of Ingula, they can still learn about electricity and experience the beauty of Ingula. To conserve such a large area, the conservation team employs various methods for monitoring the health and population density of creatures great and small. Camera traps, small mammal traps, biomonitoring and water sampling are but a few methods they use to know what species Ingula hosts and how those species are faring. A satellite view of Ingula, compared over the years, makes it clear that conservation has made an impact on the wildlife and land here. Building on such a massive scale is bound to have an impact on the landscape. To mitigate this impact, ESCOM uses its stockpiled topsoil to rehabilitate the landscape. Affected areas are covered with tunnel spoil, clay and topsoil, landscaped to match the surrounds and then hydro-seeded. Hydro-seed is a liquid mulch consisting of several types of grass, seeds, fertilizers and pesticides. This hydro-seed is sprayed over the topsoil and rapidly takes root. Within days, the slopes are erosion-proof. Ingula is also the home of a very tiny and unique crustacean, the fairy shrimp which is a key species in the Ingula Environmental Management Plan, is a tiny shrimp that lives in the shallow warm pools of the upper site. These shrimp hatch, live, breed and die during a three to four week period in the rainy season. When their pools dry out, their eggs survive in the caked mud until the next rain comes. Unfortunately, these pools would be inundated when the top reservoir filled with water. In a first-of-its-kind relocation and study program, the fairy shrimp's mud nurseries were relocated to pools on higher ground. Another key species in the environmental management plan is the southern bald ibis. Considered under threat and listed as a red data species, these shy and elusive birds nest on narrow ledges above the water. They too would be affected by the filling of the top dam. An artificial canyon was blasted out of the rock face to serve as the new nesting site. Bald ibis chicks were tagged in the months preceding filling to monitor their adjustment to their new surroundings. There are three crane species in South Africa all of which occur at Ingula and surrounding farms. The farmers in the area have become crane custodians, pledging to protect these birds on their land. To protect the diversity and life on the conservancy, it is necessary to burn fire breaks annually. These fire breaks prevent runaway fires from neighboring farms from destroying vast tracts of land and biodiversity. It also prevents the infrastructure that is the purpose of Ingula from being damaged. In fact, Ingula is one of only a few sites around the world that is fully ISO 14001 compliant for its environmental practices. To comply with the stipulations of the water usage license, great care had to be taken to mimic the natural flow of water in and around the site. Where the tributaries of the Bramhook Spreit flowed under roads, culverts were built to slow water that could erode riverbanks during flood situations. Without these measures, the inrush of water and debris could cause damage to waterways and the machine set itself. I first visited this site 12 years ago 
And we flew in by helicopter, looked around, no one knew what was going on. But the area was highly utilized. There were cattle all over the place, there were people all over the place. There was no formal conservation program at all. And I think what we've realized is that this area is phenomenally valuable from a conservation perspective. Uh, 310 species of birds. We've got uh, the incredible habitats that we've got here, representative habitats of the area. So the programs that we've put in place are working. And it, it's of value to the broader society, broader conservation society, broader national, it's a national asset at this stage. Ingula is proof that a heavy industry can build in an environmentally sustainable way as well as greatly contribute to conservation.